This is a special update from the Montserrat Volcano Observatory as of 3rd April 1996, uh, 2 p.m. The situation at the Sofre Hills Volcano has undergone a significant change since 6.52 this morning, the 3rd of April. A signal which is thought to have represented a small explosion started a period of near continuous seismic activity and ash emission which is still continuing up to the present. Welcome to part two, day two of our stay in Montserrat, one of the most famous islands in the Caribbean. We are still anchored here in Little Bay in the top northwest corner of Montserrat, but today we're pulling anchor and heading south. Ultimately, our goal is to get to Guadeloupe later this afternoon, but on the way, we're gonna stop in front of the buried city of Plymouth. If there's one thing that makes this island famous, it's one of the only places on earth where a modern city has been reduced from this to this in our time by an active volcano. Our day starts at dawn with all crew up early getting sophisticated lady ready for travel. Sasha is on deck getting the mainsail unpacked and bringing in the anchor and Nate and Jordan are prepping the Inspire drone to get some shots of the Little Bay area as we depart. As we approach the first plateau just south of the Little Bay area, you'll see the new settlement that has been built to settle everybody that was forced to abandon their homes when the capital city of Plymouth was buried by the volcano. It has taken many years to construct this settlement and all the infrastructure associated with it, including all the government headquarters and buildings. But now this is where everybody on the island resides since the entire southern half of the island is the exclusion zone and access is forbidden. That being said, today we've decided to push the limits a little bit and take sophisticated ladies straight to the base of the volcano and drop anchor right in front of the forbidden city to take a closer look. But the first thing you'll notice, I've got my mainsail reefed even though it's calm conditions because if you remember my story from part one of Montserrat, you could say the volcano taught me my lesson and today we're going in under bare poles. Perhaps one of the most significant things to take place in Montserrat this century was the opening of Air Studios by the well-known producer of the Beatles, Sir George Martin. For almost a decade, artists and groups came from around the world to record their albums in one of the finest studios to be found anywhere. Groups like the Climax Blues Band, Earth, Wind & Fire, UFO, Boy George, Midjure and Ultravox, Sting and his group The Police, Little River Band, Nazareth, Roger Daltrey, James Taylor, Art Garfunkel, Duran Duran, Sheena Easton, Elton John, groups like Cheap Trick, Rush, and Dire Straits, Eric Clapton, Bill Collins and his group Genesis, Carl Perkins, America, Stevie Wonder, Simply Red, Paul McCartney and Montserrat's own The Mighty Arrow. And not to forget Jimmy Buffett, who did his album Volcano right here. With the Inspire safely back on board, we started our trip south. But as we neared the volcano, you could see the excitement and anticipation of the crew slowly starting to shift to apprehension and uncertainty. You could say that the sight of smoke pouring down the side of a live volcano over top of the graveyard of an entire city can leave a bit of an unsettled feeling. I know there's such dark shadowy. And that uncertainty is certainly not unfounded. 
I remember my first trip sailing past Montserrat back in 2009 when I wanted to film the buried city. That was the very same year the volcano sent me a wicked blast and blew the jib clean off sophisticated lady. The next time I was sailing past was the same year when we were heading north and I had guests on board and I wanted to show them the buried city. So we were about to sail past the leeward side of the volcano. It was a beautiful sunny day and the sky was clear even around the volcano. But just as we approached, it let off a wicked blast and started to erupt. We all looked on in shock as we watched the ash billow down the leeward side of the mountain right exactly where we were going to be sailing in about two hours. We abruptly shifted course and headed around the windward side and filmed the side of the mountain from there and we saw fissures opening up everywhere and even a couple of pyroclastic flows coming down the side. So believe me when I say I have learned to respect that volcano. An ash cloud generated at 12.04 this afternoon move very quickly to a height of 6,000 to 7,000 feet and is thought to have a significant vertical explosive component. These current events represent a new development in the volcanic activity at the Sufre Hills volcano and scientists are of the opinion that it may lead to a phase of explosive activity within a few days. As it grew taller, it also became more and more unstable. Flows continued throughout the summer, destroying everything in the valley and even surging up and over the old Tar River Estate House. The first explosive event took place on September 17th, sending hot ballistics into the village of Long Ground and setting fire to some of the evacuated homes there. All right, got the jetty right here. I'm guessing probably, woo! Get a little way. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, watch the boom. Oh, look at ya. What do you think about this jetty? Looks abandoned. Looks, yeah, looks abandoned. <laughs> it's like you don't use it very Megan's much. Megan's like, I don't know what word I'm trying to say right now. It's still too early. It's not even 8 o'clock yet. little mountain dust. Oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. This is crazy. I think that that's the stuff that they need. Alright, so we're just looking for a little space to drop the hoop. Well, it was clear to see that the flows had reached all the way down to the sea helping to form the beginnings of another new delta. On the night of June 24th, the seismic machines at the Montserrat Volcano Observatory were etching out perfect patterns of hybrid earthquakes. It reminded me of a woman's labor, and I wondered if our mountain might be preparing for a new birth. And then, at one minute before one on the afternoon of June 25th, it happened. Big, it's big guys. It's bigger than I've ever seen it. Really? Yeah. Watch it guys, watch it. Just keep your eyes open, Joe. You know what to look for. Look how high, so quick.
Hey guys, hope you're enjoying the video so far. And I just wanted to remind you, this all took place over 20 years ago. And in fact, the volcano has been officially not active for, what, since almost 2010. So everything that we filmed here, including my 2009 footage, yeah, that was the last time anything really happened with it. So the first time I met David and his wife Clover was back around 2008, I think. And I was at their home and looked around the island. They gave me a great tour. We saw everything, not just the buried city. And it was fantastic. That's what kept me coming back and bringing guests back there year after year. Everybody, of course, wants to see the buried city. But the, the, the island itself is spectacular. So what I have now for you is just a short excerpt of a video from a few years ago that David did as an interview. And also a few clips from a video that David put together which show and outline some of the cool things that you can do on Montserrat if you're there on a vacation. My wife and I came uh, 35 years ago. We came looking for a place where we could raise the kids, where they'd grow up a little slower, where they wouldn't have all the influences that are you know, now it's crazy with all the technology. A place where they could have a tree house, where they could have a rope swing, where they could make up their own games and uh, grow up somewhat like I did back in the uh, 40s and 50s. So we came to Montserrat because when you'd read the Caribbean guides, they would all say something like, uh, it's the way the Caribbean used to be. The people are genuinely friendly and they still are. So we came and we fell in love with the place, as many have done. So we uh, found a little wooden house, a little native house. In fact, nobody lived in it in years. And we asked the people that owned it, you know, could we rent it? And they laughed, white people in a house like this, you know, of course, we were coming from the hippie days. They said, you know, you can have it. <laughs> and uh, we moved on to that property and developed it over the years through Hurricane Hugo, through the earthquake of uh, March 16th of 85, and then on through the volcano. And it was actually the volcano that allowed us to make lemonade out of lemons because I innocently started to video the volcano. And uh, that turned into a avocation. Greetings from Gingerbread Hill. We're here on the veranda of the villa overlooking the beautiful Caribbean Sea. When people like yourselves think of coming to Montserrat, the first question is, what is there to do? So we put together a short video to give you a few ideas of some of the many things you can do on the Emerald Isle. First, you could stop by Aqua Montserrat for a refreshing drink right on the seaside. Little bays where you can jump aboard Captain Boofy's boat for a trip down the coast to see the buried capital city of Plymouth. Or you can meet up with Andy and Emmy from Scuba Montserrat for a snorkeling trip to the secluded Rendezvous Bay, our only white beach. If you need snorkeling or diving instruction, these are the guys you want to see. Another secluded black volcanic beach is Fox's Bay, where you'll seldom find any other people. Our favorite beach is Woodlands, with showers, changing rooms, barbecue pits, and picnic tables. Back at Little Bay, you can grab a couple of kayaks and go up the coast or over to the Bat Cave. For the more adventurous, if the surf is up, you can take our surfboards or boogie boards and try to catch a wave. So that's a sampling of what awaits you when you visit Gingerbread Hill on the beautiful island of Montserrat, truly the way the Caribbean used to be. Well, thanks again for watching. I'm sure you guys got your hands full now. Lots of things to do and uh, follow those links. Yeah, you want to go and have a look. If you go to gingerbreadhill.com, you'll see all the new stuff that they're doing at Montserrat and what David and his wife Clover have to offer if you come by the island. And also don't forget to stop by the other website that David has, which is The Price of Paradise. And that's where you'll find his DVD set. And I've got the original Price of Paradise here, well, a 2007 edition, and he's got a full collection. So if you found this video interesting and really want to learn a little bit more about what it's like living on an island under an active volcano, that's where you're going to do it, right there. So 
Go have a look at that, and uh, you can order any of his DVDs that you like right there. And if you're talking to David, be sure and tell him Captain Rick says hi. So that's it for now. Have a great day, everyone, and we'll talk to you again soon.